Hey everybody, Jason here. Welcome back to Linux for Everyone, and welcome home. Wherever you guys are, I hope you are safe and sound. Uh, so this video, it's going to be the first one from my interview with Thomas of Draugr OS, a Linux distro optimized for gaming. Now over the next few videos, we'll discover his Linux origin story, hear about his new project that aims to help all gaming-focused Linux distributions. It's pretty ambitious. And we're also going to learn more about Draugr OS itself. But let's open it up with a short chat about the state of gaming on Linux. Also, uh, a really quick reminder that our brand new merch store is open. There is a ton of stuff. And we have separate URLs to serve those of you who are in the States and those of you who are in Europe and beyond. And buying something there is the best way to support Linux for everyone and look good doing it. So how do you feel about the state of gaming on Linux, just in general? Um, it's light years better than it was. <laughs> Let's start there. Um, so when I started on Linux, Steam was running on Linux, but Proton was not a thing. Wine was a mess still. Hmm. Um, and I as a new user, had no idea what to do at all. Um, at this point, if I were coming into Linux, I feel like I, I have a lot of questions, but if somebody told me, hey, go into your Steam settings, go to Steam Play, enable Proton for all these for all titles, and you should be able to play just about anything that isn't Linux native. Um, I'd say, sure, why not? If that yeah, means I can play I mean, Skyrim and Fallout. Yeah. I mean, with with the exception of uh, some, uh, you know, some rather invasive DRM and and stuff like mm -hmm. um, easy anti cheat, right? Mm -hmm. Linux gaming is. Uh, I got into Linux June two thousand eighteen, and I think a month later, or two months later, Valve announced Proton, and I was like, man, did I pick the right time to get on this train? <laughs> <laughs> and then you know, and then we've seen uh, we've seen it, it it gradually ramp up to the point where. Some games are actually more performant on Linux than on Windows, and uh, we're starting to get a lot of the, um, you know, those API level features on on Linux gaming. And aside from the stuff like you know, like like easy anti cheat, man, you can play so much, so much. I mean, like thousands and thousands of Windows only games, which is incredible. But here's the, you know. No. I, I like to be a pragmatist, but I also like to be a realist. Uh, there's still so many roadblocks for the average user. What do you think the Linux community and Linux ecosystem in general needs to work towards to to ease some of those pain points for new Linux gamers? Um, well, to start off, you need to make things more one click. Um, Amen. Yes. Um, what what I think Steam or Valve, sorry, should do to Steam is, let's say a user wants to install, I'm going to throw out a random game, Fallout 4. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's say they want to play Fallout 4 and Fallout 4 isn't whitelisted. When you hit install, normally Steam throws an error if you don't have Proton set up to sure. allow all games. Right. What they should do instead is have a little window pop up that says, this is not for your operating system. You can override this for all games by clicking OK. Um, this game may not work correctly. You know, big disclaimer, this game right. may not work correctly. Um, but you can go to ProtonDB.com or wherever else to find tips on how to fix this. Would you like to proceed? And then you hit yes or OK or whatever. And it just sets up uh, Proton to allow for all games, like right there, fixes it in your settings, all of that. And I think that would be the smart way of doing it, because doing it like that, people don't have to go digging in their settings, because I don't think it's always clear quite where you need to go look. Um, and a new Linux gamer, even if they're completely disconnected from the Linux community, like I was for the first three and a half years of my Linux career. Dang. Um, wow. Yeah. I, I had no knowledge of the existence of the Linux community for that first three and a half years. That's um, a long outside. time. 
Yeah, outside Stack Overflow. And let me tell you, Stack Overflow is not welcoming. <laughs> Somebody like I was, who was completely disconnected from the Linux community, they could still figure out how to get their system up and going, playing the latest and greatest games that, or their favorite games or whatever mm-hmm. with just one or two clicks. That needs to be the way it is. Because we think about Linux people as being part of a community. And by and large, that is true. But so often, people start Linux, and they're completely disconnected from the community. They don't know anybody online or offline. Man, they don't know do where you to think go. That's got, like, I'm sorry to interrupt. It just it's so um, it's so unlike the experience that I had, where it, I was I came into Linux as you know as a journalist and someone who already had this online presence, and mm-hmm. I would have. I mean, it would have been a completely different experience without community there from the very beginning. And is that something you think is is fairly common with new Linux users, where they're just kind of think, um, in the dark and not not really lifted yeah. up by by a community? Yeah, especially in rural hmm. areas like I am. Like I live in backwoods, North Carolina, and I can tell you right now, in my county, there are two Linux users: me and Logan, and that's God. it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. You can go a county away and there's like 10, but that's it. And when I started Linux, I was all alone hmm. and I had to figure out what I was doing from scratch, from base with zero help. And I didn't know where to go to find a Linux community. I kept hearing about the Linux community in places, but I didn't know where to go look for it. Because the hmm. Linux community is a very ambiguous term. They don't say the Linux community on the Linux for Everyone forums right. or yeah. the Linux community yeah. on Telegram. They, they don't tell you where to go look or how to get in contact with this community because it's very hmm. amorphous. And that's great in all that it's amorphous and you can go all these different places, but you need to be like, hey, this is where you go to get in contact with the community. If you don't give these new users the information they need to get in contact with the community, they're going to be like I was, completely alone, completely hmm. unaware of what to do. And if you're someone like me who didn't know programming, you didn't know command line, none of that. You are, you're not tech illiterate, but you're very, very basic hmm. user. You know, you, you're not that person who's willing to go into the command line and use them to change your XOR comp file so that um, the NVIDIA graphics oh driver loads up correctly. <laughs> if you don't know how to handle all that, then that's, you're going to be super lost super quick. That's one thing that I think has advanced very quickly in the Linux world is uh, graphics drivers in general. You know, I mean, oh, obviously yeah. we've got Mesa, and we've got the open source AMD drivers, open source Intel drivers, but specifically NVIDIA, like it, it for me, it's refreshing to see um, an active proprietary NVIDIA driver on the Pop! OS ISO or, um, yeah. you know, all the Ubuntu distros having that proprietary driver available on in the, you know, during the installation to install because I like easing those pain points. I don't think... Yeah, I I just don't think that wider Linux adoption will happen when we're you know dealing with stuff like what you just mentioned. We still have a ways to go, I think. Um, I remember, so my laptop here has a 1050 Ti, um, and when I got it, the 390 driver was the latest driver, and it, it was okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I had some weird issues at one point with it and my Wi-Fi card, and I don't, I shouldn't have had issues with my Wi-Fi card. Because I have an Intel Wi-Fi card. It should work out of the box. Yeah. Um, but for some reason, the kernel and the 360 drivers did not like me. Or not 360, 390 drivers did not like me. Um, but by the time I got to uh, 415, all of that was ironed out. And it was working beautifully. One other thing that I wanted to discuss with you about gaming in general before we move on to your project is when the Linux community, I guess mm-hmm. when, when people in the Linux community are having this conversation about Linux gaming, it's always so focused on steam, but mm-hmm. steam is becoming less and less 
of a dominant force, maybe. Yes, thank you, uh, thank you. Yeah, less and less of a dominant force. You know, especially with um, with companies like Epic Games securing more and more exclusives. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, what, what's the solution there? What is the solution that you prefer for you play Origin? So for the most part, um, everything except for Epic Games, um, I'm just going to run it through Lutris um, mm-hmm. because Lutris works really, really well. I don't use it all the time, um, but if Steam didn't exist, Lutris would be my go-to. Um, okay. For Epic Games specifically, um, I think you might have covered it recently. Uh, I'm not sure about that, so correct me if I'm wrong on that. Um, but Legendary? Um, no, that it's wasn't an open me. S- that wasn't okay. me, but I'm keep uh, talking because I'm interested. Okay. <laughs> um, so L- Legendary is an open source Epic Games client that runs natively on Linux. What? Um, yeah, yeah, it's on okay, GitHub. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, I think it's in beta right now, but it, it's getting good, real good. I haven't given it a try yet, but there are already plans to get it into the Draugr OS app repository once uh, the next release is out, um, wow. which will be in, a, in about two years, I think. Um, but that's more than enough time for them to get it stable. <laughs> we follow the... Um, we follow the um, words have left me. We cycle? follow the release cycle. Yeah, we follow the LTS release cycle. Oh, okay. um, not okay. not exactly for Ubuntu. Uh, we're usually several months after that uh, because I want them to be hitting their stable release, and then I'm in beta. That way, any mm. issues that we have, I know are my fault, not yeah. Canonical's fault. Right, right. Because uh, because I don't want to yell at Canonical for something that's not their fault. I want to yell them at them for something that's their fault and is completely valid. Because let me be honest here, it's okay to yell at someone if they make an issue, okay? If I have, if I make an issue in Draugr OS and it's actually my fault, feel free to yell at me. I deserve it. I really do. <laughs> because it, it's probably just pure tea laziness hmm. or me being you know, stupid or coding at 3 a.m., and trying to stay awake on caffeine <laughs> it is not a good idea. Um, but if, if you're going to blame somebody for something, you need to make sure that they are actually to blame and don't just blame, blame it on them to blame it on someone, you know? Yeah. But that's, it's uh, really, it's, I don't know if you've noticed this, but it's very, uh, it's very trendy right now to blame canonical for everything and to, it is, <laughs> Sorry, it is. I won't get into um, that. I won't get into that. We love you. Yeah. Canonical. I love you. Yes. Um, um, there, there are plans to get it legendary into the Draugr OS app repository eventually, um, either when they hit stable or when the next version of Draugr OS is out in a couple of years, uh, whichever comes first. Hmm. Um, so, hey, guys, if you, if, you're, if you make legendary and you're listening to this, hurry up. <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe legendary needs some additional contributors to speed up the process, maybe? That, that would probably I'm gonna help, have to um, get the word out about that because that's a big deal. I mean, Epic has Epic is becoming a force, for better or for oh, yeah. worse. And you know, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, every time I open up Epic Games, it's like, hey, here's a free game for you, and I'm like, all right, I'll take that. Mm-hmm. For you know, when I'm 65 and I have nothing else to do, I'll maybe check that out for a few minutes. Um, yeah. But in all seriousness, though, um, that's that's good to hear because yeah. there, uh, um, you know, there's there's so many entry points to Linux gaming. And we need to smooth out all of those if we can, you mm-hmm. know? 